Hey guys, so Brigenstein here with another of my pub tutorials for World of Tanks. Today we're going to be taking a look at the T-32. The T-32 is an American heavy tank, which is one of the best holddown tanks in the game. When I say holddown, I'm talking about maneuvering your tank so it's behind a hill or behind some sort of other obstacle, and the only thing visible to your enemy is the turret. Now the T-32 is such a good holddown tank that I can even hold my own against the tier 10s in this match. One of the major drawbacks of the T-32, however, is low penetration and low alpha damage. Using standard rounds, I only have 198 penetration, which is not enough to pen these tier 10 tanks. I only do 320 damage per shot, but I do have a faster reload, and when using premium rounds, your penetration is going to go up to 245, which isn't bad. To begin this round, I'm going to move immediately to a position where I feel like I can get a good hold down. On swamps, that's going to be right where that guy just pinged, up in the A5 area. One other drawback of the T-32, at least in my opinion, is it doesn't make for very exciting or dynamic play. You're going to see me in this video camping the same spot for almost the entire game. Now, it ends up being very effective. In a round with tier 10s, I do over 4,000 damage, and I'm not going to receive any HP damage to myself. But it's not nearly as exciting as playing something like the 5100 or the AMX 1390, where you can work very dynamic flanks. Even the IS-3 has enough speed and maneuverability and alpha damage to move around the map and try and work some really dynamic play. An important part of World of Tanks is knowing how fast your tank is, how fast the other tanks are, and where the first encounter is going to be. I know that I can make it to this A5 area and camp as they come down that A line before they're going to get there. Especially in my T32 where I have a great hold down position, this is really important. If they had faster tanks that might be able to beat me to this spot, I may need to choose a different area to go to instead of coming to this area to camp. Once I get set up in my spot, I'm going to make sure that they don't have a shot on the body of my tank, they can only hit my turret, and I'm going to wait for them to show up. I know exactly where they're going to be coming, so I keep my crosshair lined up and I wait for someone to pop up. I end up seeing this, it's a tier 10 tank destroyer, so penetrating it with non-premium rounds is going to be very difficult. I try and line up a command hat shot or an underbelly shot, line it up, and then I take the shot, and I do actually get some penetration here even though it's a blind shot. As I mentioned earlier, T32 play is not incredibly exciting or dynamic. I have a great advantage here. I've got a tier 10 that I'm fighting, I've got support from another tier 10 tank on my side, and he can't penetrate me, so I'm going to put out as much damage as I can in this safe location. I continue to line up shots, I try and take shots that I know are going to penetrate, and I hold my spot. He can shoot me as many times as he likes, but he is not going to be able to pen me outside of a lucky command hat shot, which will do significant damage, but I feel much more comfortable giving him a very, very difficult shot rather than trying to extend for a better shot myself. At this point in the map, we don't have a lot of spots. I can assume that there are going to be a lot on this A-line because we wouldn't have spots on them yet, whereas in the rest of the map, we would have a lot of those spots. We do start to see more people popping up over here, so I know I really shouldn't leave this position. I'm going to do my best to select targets that I know I can pen. One of my weaknesses as a player is I'm not terribly familiar with tanks that you don't see in competition. So when I look at an IS-3, a KV-5, a 5100 or a 1390 or any of those tanks that you see commonly, I know them very, very well. But when you start moving into tier 9 and tier 10 tanks that aren't even allowed in competition, I really don't know them very well. And I'm trying to find weak spots on those tanks. And you can see I struggle just a little bit trying to do that. However, since I'm playing this T32, even though I'm bouncing a lot of these shots, I'm still getting penetrations. And you can see their shots continue to hit me in the turret and they continue to bounce off. I haven't even had a module damaged yet against these tier 10 tanks that I'm fighting. It's generally a much better idea to try and put as much damage as possible into one tank instead of spreading it across all these various tanks. If you watch Sarah's stream in the evening when we're scrimming, one of the things that we always talk about is how important it is to burn a tank down so there's one less tank shooting at you. In this video, you see me spreading my damage across all these different tanks. The reason for that is it's very difficult for me to pen some of those tier 10 tanks. If I can take an easy shot and get out that 320 damage, I'm going to switch to a tank and I'm going to do it, and I'm going to hope that this heavy tank near me can do the damage to finish him off since his penetration and damage are much higher than mine. Oftentimes, these tier 10 matches tend to play a lot slower than your lower tier matches. When we run our Churchill platoons to grind experience, it's not uncommon to see maps nearing their end at the 5 minute mark. If you look at the scoreboard here, there have only been 5 kills total and we're nearing the 5 minute mark. 
that means that there's a lot that still has to happen. If you look at the map, it's just this other tier 10 and I holding the north. We've got lots of tanks down by the south, so we really can't push through here. All we need to do to continue being successful in this game is continue to hold this spot. Try and get a couple kills where we can, but don't let them take the north so that hopefully our numbers advantage down south will be able to push and give us an opening to push ourselves. Until then, there are a couple things that I need to be mindful of. If they do a hard push down that A-line, they can probably outnumber us and destroy both these tanks. If I get into an actual brawl fight where I'm getting side scraped, there's going to be very, very little that I can do in my T-32 against these other tanks. My other weakness as a T-32 is if those tanks in the B-5, C-5 area come on my flank and drop down on my side and shoot me. I've got very little response for them, so I need to make sure that they don't come over that hill, and instead, we can continue holding this spot. I do have several tank destroyers watching my flank. You can see them there in the uh, C2 area and the D1 area. Hopefully they'll be able to keep those tanks from pushing my flank and do some damage, but if they can't, I do need to be careful. I see an opportunity to push up. We have a two tank lead. My heavy tank is moving up. We got that extra kill, and now we're going to start pushing. As I push up, I still have to be mindful of the tanks in the village. I see that there are several there, and they can get those side shots on me, and especially in these tier 10 games, they can almost one-shot me sometimes. I move up into another holdown location, I give them the front of my turret. I don't have a shot on that TD, but I do see a T-34 pushing. I make sure nothing's coming from my front, I readjust and try and get a shot on this T-34. T-34 is very similar to me, I need to take advantage of the side shot and not try and get a front shot on him. He's moving back, and I don't feel comfortable in this opening, so I'm going to try and re engage but I'm not going to stick around. I end up pushing back to my heavy and we're going to engage these last two tanks between us and the point. As I push up, I'm continuing to maintain my hold down strategy. Every time I move in this T-32, I'm thinking to myself, how can I make my hull the least visible? How can I give them turret shots? Remember, my turret can get shot by anything as much as I want and the odds of them penetrating are very, very low. I push up and we get a spot on this second tank. I turn over, I take a shot on him, and I get that kill. It only does 8 damage, but that's all we need, and now we have a 2v1. I continue to play hold down. Now, I probably should push a little more aggressively here. That tank will not be able to one-shot me. I want to make him make a choice. He either has to turn and engage me and give a side shot on my friend over there, the tier 10 heavy, or he'll give me open shots on his back and he continue to try and kill that tier 10 heavy. Either way, we're going to get the kill if I push more aggressively instead of going for these command hat shots. Notice here, I did take module damage, but because my armor is so thick, he actually did no HP damage. I'm able to use my repair kit, repair my gun, and now it's like nothing's happened at all. At this point, I do push aggressively. He doesn't turn, so I'm able to get an easy back shot on him. I turn around for another back shot. He continues to engage the tier 10 heavy that's my friend, and we get that kill on him. The rest of the match is fairly boring, so I'm going to speed it up a bit. Even though we do have a 10-7 lead, and most of our tanks are higher tier than what they have alive, I'm going to apply this capture pressure. What that's going to do is it's either going to force their tanks to turn around and acknowledge that I'm on cap and expose themselves to shots, or they can ignore me and we get the cap and win if somehow they were to come back from this massive disadvantage that they have. This map is great for T-32s because we've got these giant craters that we can hide in. I am going to eliminate any shots that I can take, but at the same time, there's a very good chance that I'll get two shots off on any tank who comes my way. What's going to have to happen for a tank to push me is they will have to crest this hill, which gives me an early belly shot. That shot is going to penetrate almost any tank, and then they're going to have to engage in this hold down location. There's a very good chance that they're going to hit my turret, giving me two shots before they get anything off. When I see that that tank dies, I realize that there are only two tanks left. We have a lot of tanks left, so I move up and I just try and do a little bit of damage. I get that track so that he can't move. I reload and I take a second shot on that Tiger. Now, when you're in a situation like this, oftentimes it's better to get off the cap. You want to get that extra experience from the combined team damage. We're going to get that anyway, so I'm going to stay on cap. I move back into that hold down location just because it's a good habit. I know where the other TD is. I know he doesn't have a shot on me. We go and kill him, and that's a successful round for us. 
That's going to do it for today's World of Tanks pub tutorial. I hope you guys managed to enjoy it. I know the T32 plays a lot slower and is a bit more boring than most of the tanks that I normally play, but hopefully it was still somewhat fun. Hopefully you learned something. Remember, if you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe on YouTube, follow me on Twitter at Zoid Bergenstein, and if you want to watch a scrim in the evenings, head on over to twitch.tv slash Sero, that's S-E-R-H-0, and you can watch us from 8 to 12 Eastern every night. Thank you guys, and I'll see you in my next pub tutorial.